G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today we're going to be having a look at the Chad Phantom, the Chad F4C, which is an absolutely smashing plane, 100% better than the F4E in every way. We all know that ladies and gentlemen, and today we're going to be having an absolutely fun time flying it. If uh, you didn't know, it's just not pretty. It's not a fun plane to fly, but we're going to be flying it anyway, because I like to uh, sort of put myself through a little bit of... A little bit of fun times, a little bit of, a little bit of happy fun times, which means a lot of pain and a lot of suffering. The F4C is one of those planes that is in a bit of a weird spot at the moment. It's not exactly in the best of places, but at the same time, it's not exactly in the worst either. The F4C sits at 10.3, which is below the 10.7 maximum battle rating, and this often allows it to get into games that are at 9.3. First of all, I am going to be showing you a full up tier because this is what you're going to be suffering through the most. And of course, I am flying a spaded F4C with RWR, no flares, AIM 7Ds, and AIM 9Es. For some reason, I was under the impression that you could slave the AIM 9Es to your radar, but I don't know if that has been removed. It doesn't seem to be the case anymore. I found that to be uh, kind of annoying. But that was one of the good things about AIM 9 sort of the, the later AIM 9s, where you could sort of slave them to the radar and have them focus on the target that is sort of pinged out by your radar. Unfortunately, I don't think you can do that anymore with the AIM 9Es, unless I'm missing something, so do let me know in the comments section below. The F4C is one of those planes that really does struggle, but at the same time, like I said, it can absolutely shred things. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at a match where I basically end up having a very not happy fun time. And then the next match I'm going to show you is where we do have a very happy fun time, but we're fully down-tiered, so it's kind of wrong. And that's what the problem with the F4C really is. It's just another sort of facet of uh, battle rating compression, and what happens when you have too many aircraft of a certain power level uh, within a certain BR range. Now, I'm talking here between 10.7 and 9.7 being a little bit too more on the or too on the compressed side, in my opinion. I think there's a lot to be expanded upon, but in the same vein, we kind of need a couple more planes to fill out those battle ratings. Kind of before Gaijin even, even budges, because they have a little bit of a hesitation towards expanding the battle ratings when they don't have a lot of aircraft at those battle ratings. So, for example, at 10.7 or 10.3. Now, in this case here, we're going to be having a look at how I play out the Phantom. And in this situation here, I'm going to go for the altitude, because remember, even though you're facing things that are basically better than you in most ways, you still have the AIM-7s, and whilst they're quite not the AIM-7Es, they are definitely still able to do a lot of damage. Now, this particular run here, I'm looking for targets where the enemy is climbing, so hopefully I can get someone that is not paying attention, or is climbing, or maybe doesn't have RWR and is sitting at altitude. Personally, if you don't have RWR, I believe that you shouldn't be sitting at altitude, I think it's very risky, and I think you shouldn't be taking that risk, because it is not a fun time. I spot someone there at 6 kilometers. I lead the AIM-7, fire it off, and it seems to be on its merry way. Looking at a 5 kilometer closing distance there on a MiG-21MF, and I see another missile up at the top there, being sent out by something that I don't really know. I've managed to lock the target. I'm going to lead the next AIM-7, and it is a Mirage. Unfortunately, it looks like this AIM-7 isn't really going to be tracking, and now I'm within 3 kilometers, so it's starting to get a little bit hairy on the side of the uh, AIM-7s. So what I should be doing here is switching to the AIM-9Es there. Got an AIM-9E looking there, pretty at that Mirage. I don't think he's paying attention, and I managed to send it on the way, and that is going to land me a nice little hit there, giving me 2 kills. If you can pick up enemies that are not paying attention, then I think you have a much easier time at just, in general, being successful. There is a Harrier behind me, but remember that I am a lot faster than the Harrier, so I'm going to keep my speed up. Prep another AIM-9E and have it locked onto what I think to be the slowest target in the area. I think it decides it wants to go for the FGR-2, the Harrier, then the F4E, and unfortunately it uh, actually gets the F4E. No, the FGR-2, sorry. Which is... Um, Excellent news for me. I, I'm going to take it. I didn't honestly expect to get that kill. And then the Harrier launches an SRAM at me, which just goes poof before it manages to strike me. Keeping your speed against Harriers is a really, really strong tactic, and in this case here, it's managed to pay off beautifully. I'm going to prep myself another AIM-9E, and I'm looking at a little bit of an ambitious missile here. At 4km, the AIM-9E is not going to be a sure kill, but 
within that three kilometer range, it's looking a little bit better, but unfortunately I'm not getting any enemies that are flying in a good aspect. So I'm going to try and maybe launch it at this 21 MF, but now I'm getting close enough to use the guns and the Harrier presents itself as the slowest target in the area, which means I'm going to go for the Harrier. Unfortunately though, it leaves me with a few sticky situations. I have an R60 looking at my booty hole and what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn at the last minute, but unfortunately I'm too slow. However, the R60 doesn't quite strike me enough. It has crippled me sort of enough to basically make me easy food. I can't turn, I can't do anything, and this next one is going to finish me off, which is a very sad day. All in all, four kills, basically top of the team, and a uh, big fat L to me. If I'd gotten two more kills, I would have carried the match, but you know what? There's only a certain amount that you can do when your team falls apart. That doesn't mean, however, that the F4C is completely a suffer bus. Unfortunately, and for, for your enemies, unfortunately for you, you get down tiers. Now, personally, I feel like these down tiers are a little bit on the dirty side, which is why I oppose the F4C going to 10.3 in the first place, but it's here and we might as well abuse it. Why don't, why don't we sort of sneak out and, and use those AIM 7s where basically no one else at this BR has RWR. It, it feels very, very dirty, but you know what? If a little bit of clubbing on the on the top side happens for the MiG-21 Bisses, then whilst it's not fair, it's kind of relieving to see a little bit of clubbing on the downside there. It doesn't make it right, it doesn't make it good, but it does sort of make up for those times where you're a little bit on the short changed side. Now, in the F4C, when I'm top tier, I'm going to be climbing straight into the enemy because I have no fear. There's absolutely no fear to be had here. The only thing at this battle rating that can stand up to you in terms of its uh, basically head-on capabilities at high altitudes like this is the F-104S with AIM-7Es, but it only gets two of them and you can pretty much see it from a long way away. It looks like, however, we're not really going to be fighting at high altitude here. Most of the enemies have seemed to have gone towards the deck, which gives me a fairly good opportunity to have some uh, seal clubbing fun, which is feeling very wrong still. I managed to lock this uh, Yak-38, I don't know how, but I'm going to send an AIM-7E and it looks like it's going to be tracking nicely, which is very, very odd. The F5 presents itself as a beautiful target in front of me for some reason, and I managed to burt its way back to the hangar. Now, in this situation here, I have a Yak-38 behind me and another Yak-38 about 5 kilometers behind me. The one behind me at 5 kilometers is isn't a real threat, but Having a look at that R60 is a little bit worrying. What I'm going to do is I'm going to roll. And by rolling, what you do is you basically throw the missile off, bleeding it of its speed when it makes those turns. If it's going to be turning, it's going to try and lead in front. But if you continue to sort of adjust your turns, it's going to overcompensate. And as a result, you're going to be able to throw it off. Speaking of throwing it off, the F5 is uh, presenting itself again. Another one? presenting itself which is very convenient unfortunately no guns for me but I get to prep myself an AIM-9E for this MiG-21 I think it's a MiG-21F but I can't really be too sure it could have R60s and you never know so I'm looking at this uh, Yak-38 here who's looking very juicy but unfortunately I'm not able to get a lock it doesn't matter it looks like he's probably going down anyway and uh, the CL-13 is also looking like a fairly juicy target. At 3 kilometers. I think that that is going to be a surefire win, but unfortunately it doesn't end up providing any of the juices. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look towards the MiG-21, and it turns out that MiG-21 is in a little bit more trouble than I thought it would be. The CL-13 has more than moved away from my missile and is no longer a threat to it, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put the nose down and I'm going to try and maybe see if I can get a cheeky AIM-7, Maybe see if I can lock him for an AIM-9E. I didn't, I didn't think that uh, the radar wasn't slavable at this point, which is kind of funny. But I also have plenty of AIM-7s that I can use because my opponents haven't really been flying at high altitudes. The MiG-21 comes in for a head-on, it's a PFM, and I pull off way too late, but still we managed to trade nothing. If you're going to be pulling off from a head-on, I would personally recommend pulling off at about 2 kilometers at the very least. Maybe with uh, the higher tier jets that are firing Vulcan cannons, I would potentially go off at 2.5 because the Vulcan cannons have a ridiculous range and you're traveling at very high speeds. Anyway, moving on, we have Trump Airlines 69 
having a look at my little AIM-9E, he uh, spots my little friend and decides to put himself into a turn, which gives me plenty of time to uh, lead the shots and potentially get some guns on, but unfortunately no dice, and I go into a vertical here as a little bit of a, a lag roll. Now he can't really follow me up unless he is willing to sacrifice his life for Pakistan, and unfortunately that's exactly what he does with a cheeky little pilot snipe and uh, a missile that kind of goes nowhere, thankfully not into my booty. So, having a look at the sort of kills that I've gotten here, whilst a lot of them have presented themselves as a neat little target, the F4C is able to put itself into situations where it can make the most of them. However, is this really fair? Having a situation where you are basically the fastest thing bar the F-104S, you can climb the most, you have the most missiles, you have RWR and radar, AIM-9Es, AIM-7Ds, and you're at 10.3, I kind of feel like this is a little bit much for 10.3. It's also not a lot for 10.7, and this is where we come to the dilemma. Should this plane be at a battle rating where it clubs, or should it be at a battle rating where it only suffers? Now, whilst you might think that it'd be right to give it a little bit of a concession and give it the little down tier because it suffers so much in up tiers, I think the solution here is to just do it properly. Gaijin should realistically increase the battle ratings to 10 or to 11.0 and there is where lies your solution it's not to up tier or to down tier a vehicle because it's performing poorly in this case you can clearly see that this plane is performing excessively well in a down tier and performing excessively poorly in an up tier this is a classic case of battle rating compression and the fact that gaijin doesn't see this is kind of concerning the fact that I can see this as a player with no experience in game design, with no experience in game balancing, except for, I don't know, 35,000 matches of War Thunder. I think that this is kind of worrying, because the fact that they won't do it means that there's some sort of either inability, an inability to see, or there's some sort of willingness or lack of willingness to improve it for certain reasons. I don't think it's monetary. I think that they're very obsessed with their queue times and they want to keep it that way. Personally, I see queue times as a product of a good game. If people want to play a good game, they're going to wait for the queue times. Not only that, but if queue times are good, it means that the balance is good. We saw this when battle rating decompression happened when the F4C was introduced, when we got a 10.3 and when we got a 10.7. We saw this. It was patently obvious. But I don't think it's really hit Gaijin's noggins yet, which is really unfortunate because, in my opinion, there are just a couple of small steps that could be taken to alleviate the pressure. Anyway, ladies and gents, that'll do it for today. Thank you very much for watching. I sincerely appreciate your time. Check out my links in the description below. Leave a like and a comment for the algorithm. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.